again to the the Arian TV YouTube channel I'm happy to have you once again um, to share God's word together you remember last time um, I was on the hope of his on of his calling and we have gotten to a point where we said children of God believers should be thinking much more of the spiritual blessings me thinking of their blessings in Christ Jesus of their hope in Christ Jesus in spiritual dimensions better than thinking of it in physical dimensions and we uh, studied the book written to the Romans in chapter 8 where it tells us why we need to understand the subjection that we have with our bodies now at this present time. So for that reason, Christians should be aware, should be careful when they think of, I mean, the hope that they have in Christ and connecting it with physical blessings. When we connect our hope in Christ Jesus with physical blessings, we may have problems when we don't have the realization of it in the way we want them. So, today, I also want to dwell further on it and um, move a little further to what are the spiritual blessings we can be thinking about. But before I do that, let me give you another scripture to back this understanding that Christians are called to spiritual blessings, not primarily to physical blessings. It is true. We will have manifestations of these spiritual blessings in physical dimensions as God wills. But primarily, let us not be thinking of our blessings in Christ Jesus mean too much in connection with physical realities. It will not make us work worthy of God. You, you, you know why? In I want to give you another scripture. Another, another scripture. In, in Romans chapter um, 5, the book written to the Romans, chapter 5. Let's let's start reading from um, I think let's let's read from verse 3. It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. So Christians will have tribulations. They will have problems. They will have um, persecutions. They will have several sufferings. You remember the last time we read it, it says, we, we are also suffering. In that Romans chapter 8, it says, we are also suffering. We grow on. We have problems in our bodies. We have problems at this present time. Why so? Because God has subjected us to sufferings. I mean, some, some, some problems. Like this one causes tribulations. And we glory in them. Because we have a different kind of hope. We hope, I mean, we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience. And experience hope, hope again, hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. See, this is in contrast to the, the, the love of God being shed abroad in our hearts is in contrast to the tribulation that we are experiencing. Hmm? The, the 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 problems, the tribulations, the sufferings we are. Experiencing experiencing now we do not have uh, mean problems 
as, as to being troubled. We are not troubled. We take them lightly. Because we have hope in God. And this hope that we have has shed the love of God abroad in, abroad in our hearts. So we have the understanding of what we are passing through here now. We hope in better things. So the hope this place is talking about is the hope that is not connected to physical realities. I hope you are getting it. Let me read it again. It says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. I want you to underline that. Before I move on, please underline that. It says, it says, and hope maketh not ashamed. I don't know whether you have thought so deeply about that. And hope maketh not ashamed. I, I think this is not talking about every kind of hope. Because there is the kind of hope that the people of the world has. I mean, the people of the world that they have. And make them ashamed. For instance, do you know it is possible for somebody to hope that, oh, I will have this. Oh, I would build the house. Or oh, I would build this house. Or oh, I would I would raise this my child and it's going to graduate and it's going to give me this and it's going to give me that. And the hope is dashed. Do you know that is possible? Do you know it is possible to hope in a way and you are put to shame? Have you not seen people, somebody hoping for something and later he comes up and he says oh i am put to shame i am put to shame so it is not every kind of hope, of hope that will not put to shame that is the hope of the world that is the hope we can have in the flesh that is the hope we can have in our physical bodies and it will give us shame <laughs> I don't know whether I'm communicating to you. There is a way we can hope things and hope for things and it will not come to reality. And that is the shame that comes with it. But the Bible tells us here that hope maketh not ashamed. This means that there is, this, there is a kind of hope that does not make us shame. And that is the hope of his calling, the hope that is found in Christ. The hope of the spiritual blessings that is in the heavenly places. That does not make a shame. Because it is anchored on the sure word of prophecy. Sure word of God. It does not fail. It does not fail. That is the hope that God has called us into. So when we think of this hope that does not make a shame. I am not saying everything we hope about. You know, you see, there are, there are, there are people including the people of God that hope anyhow. And if you, if, if you followed what I am explaining to you, one way to hope anyhow as Christians is to hope that our blessings are connected primarily to phys physical realities. When you hope that way, then so many people Many people, I mean, including people of God, have been put to shame because the hope is not found in Christ. The best way our hope can be found in Christ, I mean, as God has promised to the people of God, it is a promise. And it is a promise that is found in Christ Jesus, is that we are called to spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We are not going to enjoy it only now in physical dimensions. And when we understand that, we will not be confused in what we hope in. I hope you get, I hope you are, you, are, you are getting my point. So, it says the hope of God, the hope that we have makes not ashamed. And this is the more reason we need to understand as Christians that when we truly hope in Christ, then it does not make a shame. Before I move further, 
I believe one of the reasons why Christianity is becoming weak and weaker is because of the way we profess our hope to the world. And when the world sees that these things are not true, then they rethink in a way that is not profitable for us as Christians. It's not profitable to God. And so many of them will not come to us. Many of them will not come to faith in Christ Jesus because we promise them, we tell them things contrary to the hope that we find in Christ Jesus. You see, the word, the, the word of the unbelievers, the, un, the unbelieving word, they have seen that. You see, there is a way some people will say, when you come to Jesus Christ, you will be having all the truth. You will be having all the good things of life. Oh no, you don't have problem. Oh no, your children will be okay. Oh no, you will, be, you will have money. No, you will have the things of this life. Oh, you will build houses. No, it's going to be well with you physically. But when they study, when they see our lives, when they see, they see Christians die like the rest of the world. They see Christians not having money like the rest of the world. They see Christians not having health in court. Health. Me, see Christians that are sick and they die as a result of sickness. They see, they see all these things. And when you now build their hope in such things, many of them laugh at us. They laugh because actually there is the shame that comes with such hope. There is the shame that comes with such hope. Because many who say such things don't realize them. Christians, for that matter. So, what is this teaching us? It is teaching us that we need to understand. I hope I'm not repeating myself too, too, too much, but I, am, I, am, I, I want us to really understand this, this thing in Christ. And that is, that is the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. And one of the ways, the best ways, one of the best ways to think about this hope in Christ Jesus is to see them primarily in spiritual dimension. So we have spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that is our hope. And it does not make us shame. The physical realities of these things, we will not enjoy fully now. And we can understand it because the Bible tells us the way to understand it. A time will come when we will fully enjoy these physical blessings that we have in Christ Jesus. I hope you get that point. Now, I would also like to start mentioning the elements of our hope. Those things that we can hang our hearts on, we can fix our gaze on we can understand that truly this is the hope this is the true hope that cannot fail that fades not away that cannot put to shame so when you tell anybody as a, as a christian and i'm also challenging you challenging you as um as, as a preacher of the word of god as a, as um, a speaker of the word of god as somebody who goes out to minister life, to minister the word of God to people. I mean, all of us as children of God. When we go out to speak the word of God, we should primarily talk in this dimension. We should talk in the dimension that when we tell the people of the world, when we tell them about Christianity, when we tell them about the hope of our calling, we should primarily focus on spiritual blessings, not on physical blessings. When we do that, we will not, they will not, they will not come to be put to shame. They will come to, to, to fix their hope on the reality of the gospel. Now, let me put it this way again. There is nothing bad in, there is nothing bad in preaching and telling people, like a bait, that come to Jesus, it will be well with you. But immediately they come, we should let them realize the meaning of being well. We should speak we should immediately attach our being well. Come, it's going to be well with you. Come, Jesus will make you uh, great. Come, Jesus will better your life. Come, 
no yes there is nothing bad in saying things like that that's like me um, using a bait <laughs> that's like telling them you 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 know you they, you want them to come and then you hit them harder that is nothing bad but immediately they come we should attach the meaning of being well being great um and all sorts of words that we use to spiritual blessings if we continue to tell them if they, their children will be okay uh, their health will be this are, it's like we have not understood fully the meaning of our hope in christ jesus the meaning of our hope in christ jesus is best realized in spiritual dimensions yes we have physical blessings and like i've told you that will be according to how god allows it for his purpose for his reasons for what he wants us to do for him but we are not to be promising people with hope that they will have the physical blessings um so to say when they come to christ jesus so i hope you got that point this this place is telling us that uh because of hope the hope that is in christ jesus uh which will not put us to shame uh we continue to trust god uh, we, we continue not to be troubled because of what we are experiencing physically because the love of God has been shared about in our hearts. It is because of the hope, what we know he has promised us, what fixes our mind straight with him. And so we love him. We do not love him because of the physical realities of what we are to enjoy in this world, but because of the physical, I mean, spiritual blessings that he has blessed us with in Christ Jesus. I hope you got this point the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ Jesus. That will not fade. That is the hope that does not make a shame. Before I conclude this um, episode, let me give you one. Let me give you, let, I, I, I'm, I'm going to start it. So the next episode, I'm going to continue. So let me give you one hope. Or how do I put it? Let me give you one element of the hope that does not put to shame. And you will also go with me to John. You know, I like to read scripture so that you know that I am not just saying these things anyhow. It is what I have studied in the Word of God, and I want you to study too. Or like we call this uh, the Beyond TV. Um, something we would like you to study too. Me check the Word of God and see if it is true. There is nobody that has that place or that right in our lives. Whoever that person is, that we cannot check his word with the word of God. Whoever that person is, we have to check his word. We have to check what he tells us. You remember Paul, when he spoke to the Bereans, they went back, they checked the word of God, and they found that I mean, what Paul was telling them, was true. And so Paul commended them, said they were more noble because they were checking the word of God against what men tell them. So, please, again, I would like us to read the word of God. Uh, and that is John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Let me start reading from verse uh, twenty. Let's, let's start from verse 25. I, mean, I want to read the context so that you understand what Jesus was saying. It says, Jesus answered them, I told you and you believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I, send, as I said unto you. My sheep bear, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my, my hand. My Father which gave, them unto me, which gave them me is greater than all, 
and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Did you hear that? Let me read it again. I like, I like that scripture. So my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So my father will give them me. He is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. That is the hope of our calling. That's a spiritual blessing. So as Christians, Jesus promised, Jesus told us that we have received eternal life. So that is the hope that cannot put to shame. Every Christian, every child of God is eternally secured. So it is not something you, you run after. It is something that has been given to us in Christ Jesus. Of course, we are going to have the full manifestation of it. The full enjoyment of it. At a particular point in time, as God has fixed it. Now, but... The eternal life of Christ is in us. We have received it. It is the hope that we have in us that one day we are going to fully enjoy the eternal life of Christ that we have received within us. So, this is what you can term as the spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That dimension that every Christian is blessed with eternal life is something that cannot put to shame. Every child of God, every Christian, every born again is eternally secure. And we can tell this to the whole world. When you go out to preach, when you go out to tell anybody the message of Christ, now, even if you are going to tell them to come for a better life, even if you are going to tell them to come to Christ, it is going to be well with them. If you are going to tell them to come to Christ um, and whatever dimension you, you are saying it, as bait, quickly attach it to, quickly attach this to your being well, being great, having good things, attach it to eternal life. No religion in the world again promised that. No religion. It is only Christ Jesus that promises that anybody who believes in him will have eternal life. In fact, this place says he has given them eternal life. And that is the hope that every Christian must have. And it does not put to shame. I hope you got this. And I hope you understand it. So next time, when you are telling anybody and you are preaching the message of Christ to them, tell them about eternal life. Not physical health. Yes. We will have health as God wants it. Physically, God will bless his people with physical health. Mm. But he has not promised every believer physical health in God. Some people will be sick. And as a result of that, die. I mean Christians. So, but whether they are sick in this life and they die, they cannot lose eternal life. It is promised unto them. It is given unto them. And that distinguishes, that sets apart Christianity from all other religion. And you can say this to anybody in the world as the hope of Christian calling. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening. And I hope you will come next time. Uh, and probably next time we are going to finish this series. Thank you.